Bernice, what do you do? Do you, Bernice, do you have two computers? You have... I do. Yeah, I have. Um, I'm, I'm logged in twice. <laughs> one for <laughs> one for the big screen, one for uh, audio. Then you can vote twice too, right? <laughs> okay, let's let's begin. Um, this is a special meeting of the Princeton Zoning Board of Adjustment being held electronically via Zoom on May 31st, 2023 at 3 p.m. Uh, pursuant to Section 13 of the Open Public Meeting Act, adequate notice of the time and place of this meeting has been given by prominently posting the sunshine notice of the Princeton Zoning Board of Adjust Adjustment. Uh, such notice has been placed on the official bulletin board at the Princeton Municipal Complex and by transmitting a copy of same to the Princeton Packet, Town Topics, The Times, Trentonian, and by filing a copy with the Clerk of Princeton on May 28th, 2023, has been posted to the municipal website, www.princetonnj.gov slash meetings. Pursuant Hang on. Pursuant to Executive Order 107, due to the state of emergency in New Jersey regarding COVID-19 coronavirus, notice that during the declared state of emergency, all regular and special meetings of the Zoning Board of Adjustment, all of the Zoning Board of Adjustment will be held electronically via Zoom was transmitted to the Princeton Packet, Town Topics, The Times, and was filed with the Clerk of Princeton on, the, on this 24th day of April, 2020. Such, notice, such notices have been placed on the official bulletin board at the Municipal Complex and on the Princeton website and are, in, are to be maintained throughout the year and by transmitting a copy of same to the Princeton Packet, Town Topics, The Times, Trentonian, Comcast Media, and by filing a copy thereof with the Clerk of Princeton, uh, notices have been placed on all window doors of the municipal complex. Thank you. I do, I do have a quick question before we start. Karen, the notice, the notice said 7.30 p.m. Uh -huh. The notice where? The one that I just read. It said, the copy I read said 7.30. I... No, that's your opening statement. Oh, okay. The notice right. does say 3 o'clock on the, uh, the sunshine three notice. Okay, all right. Great. So. Very good. We're good. Okay, okay. Ms. Chen. Here. Ms. Colson. Here. Mr. Davich. Here. Mr. Floyd? Here. Mr. Shriver? Here. Mr. Tenenbaum? Mr. Stein? Ms. Donna? Yes. Chairman Cohen? Here. Thank you. Okay, I guess the first order of business are the minutes, and we have five to review. Um, they were in previous packets, I believe. And um, so we should take them individually. The first was January 20th, 21. Has everyone had an opportunity to review them and any questions or comments or a motion? Really good to me. I'll 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 move to approve. Uh, you were in there that day. Was it <laughs> really Sorry. for the graduate hotel? The one twenty twenty one. Oh, so moved. Okay, I'll second it. Thank you. Oh, you are correct. Absent. <clears throat> trying to do my part after the fact then, I guess. Ken? Yes. Wilson? Yes. 
Floyd. Yes. Driver. Yes. Chairman Cohen. Yes. Next one is January 27th, 21, 2021. Questions, comments, or motions? So moved. Thank you. I could second. Thank you. Ken? Yes. Ms. Bolson? Yes. Mr. Davich? Yes. Mr. Floyd? Yes. Mr. Driver? Yes. Chairman Cohen? Yes. Okay. Uh, minutes from February 8th, 2021. Again, questions, comments, or motions? I'll move to approve. Thank you. Second. Thank you. Ken? Yes. Olson? Yes. Mr. Davich? Yes. Boy? Yes. Driver? Yes. Chairman Cohen? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Minutes from February 24th, 2021. Questions, comments, or a motion, please. I'll move approval. Thank you. I'll second. Ms. Chen? Yes. Wilson? Yes. Navich? Yes. Boy? Yes. Mr. Shriver? Yes. Women Cohen? Yes. The last minutes to review March 24th, 2021. Questions, comments, or motions? Please. I'll move approval. Thank you. I'll second it. Okay. Ms. Chen? Yes. Ms. Colson? Yes. Mr. Floyd? Yes. Ms. Driver? Yes. Chairman Cohen? Yes. Thank you. Okay. The end of the year report. Derek, do you want to summarize that or how do you want to do that? I don't, I mean, if uh, I think it's accurate, uh, we heard 52 variance applications um, that one interpretation. We had four time extensions. Uh, the 35 C variances, uh, which were approved generally with conditions. Um, we had 11 lot area uh, variances again, which is almost 25% of the cases that we hear. So, I mean, I think we've said it every year, but maybe want to again, reiterate that it's, a, it, it's kind of a, a waste of the board's time in my opinion, but um, uh, then we have the D variances. Uh, we had four D1 variances and four four area ratio variances. Um, we had three site plan applications. Um, pretty busy year. So some of the recommendations at the bottom, I mean, we're, we're in process. I think it may, I don't know how long it's gonna take to consolidate the ordinances, but we're, we're moving slowly in that direction. Uh, when do you think that might happen, just as an aside? We have actually staff and council, you know, committee have gone through all of the uh, existing township and borough ordinances and kind of done a, what we think should be consolidated and picked up uh, policy questions. And we are now working with a codifier to codify it, at which point after each section, we'll go back to the committee review it with them and then uh, have to go to council. So in the best of times, another six months to a year, I would say. Wow. 
Wow. Okay. So the more you look at it, the more problems you see, and, and we keep adding on to it um, as we continue to make ordinances. Hmm. The ordinance itself. Okay. Is it likely that the master plan process will bring some ideas forward that might be taken into uh, or not? Does that happen? I mean, it doesn't happen often, the, a new master plan, I guess, but. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think that's more of a global macro like map of where the town wants to go. So hopefully we'll get some ideas. I know there's a lot of talk about, you know, the FAR and the downtown and then density and uh, letting two and three families go in some of the township zones where they don't go now. So I think, I think some stuff will come out with it, but they're going to kind of proceed on separate tracks and hopefully the most important stuff from the master plan gets, you know, put in ordinance form and hopefully it will get added to our, our code and it will all be one code. They're, they're kind of two separate, you know, this is more utilitarian, just getting a working document and the master plan is kind of like thinking about where we want to go for the next, you know, period of time until there's a re-examination. A lot of stuff about flooding and, and it's a little bit broader, you know, as you know, it goes to sustainability and transportation, and education, and all the different components. Is there yes. some redundancy between the, when I add up the cases we heard, it's more than 44. It looks to me like it's 48 or almost 50. Um, I'd have to go back and double check. I'm just wondering if we heard any D variances in conjunction with a C variance. Uh, there could have been, I'll, I'll double check. And if everything else is all right, I could have that corrected or clarified by the next meeting. Okay. And Derek, do you know just offhand whether this is more or less than previous years? I think it's, uh, we've been averaging around 40. So hmm. last year was a busy year. You know, we had a lot of meetings, double monthly meetings. So hopefully this year's a little better so far. But uh, it was busy. I think last year was a little bit busier than usual. Are you seeing? Are you seeing a lot of newer applications? Do you think we'll be busy again this year? I have four uh, single-family applications in right now, so um, we're not. They're not all going to be ready for June. It seems to be slowing down a little bit. You know, I, I know there's been commercial projects that have been approved. By the planning board, and I'm, I'm sure that the cost and the increase of borrowing money has probably slowed some of those projects down. When it almost doubles in like a year or two, it can affect your bottom line. But I think it's a little bit less than it has been last year in terms of volume. Okay. I have a question about the. Um... The, the third recommendation it's uh, for the elimination of variances for non-conforming lots. Is there anything that's needed to 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 get that push forward, or it, it it comes up every year and then just rolls over? I mean, you could talk to a council member. That always helps push things along. Um, mm -hmm. That definitely helps. I like to, I want to, can I just throw this out and you all can jump on it and stomp on it and whatever you want to do, but I, I'd like to at least throw it out. I'm perfectly willing to meet twice a month. Is that just stupid planning? Well, I go to like uh, a meeting every week and I'm not really looking to go to any more meetings. I can't even go on vacation, you know, I, I get one week off a month, so. I'm not in favor. I mean, if we I had- was just, I was just meeting. thinking if we could do it and keep the meetings a little bit shorter, it'd be better than, but I, it's a fine with me, Derek. I just threw it out there. No, that's a good idea. I don't know if we have, I mean, you know, I, I don't, you know, if we have like, for instance, if we have four cases, four residential cases in June, 
that's probably, unless any of them are controversial, something we could handle in one meeting. Um, I think it would be easier to have just one meeting a month than than two. Uh, personally, yeah, I it's agree. It's a lot of work on staff because yeah. I mean, Cla <clears throat> Claudia does a lot of work hand holding with the applicants, the ones that don't have attorneys. With the ones that have attorneys, it's it's they know how to notice, they know how to do their notice, and their mailings are usually correct. But um, the people that don't have attorneys, I mean, she holds their hand the whole way through, and it. To do that twice a month, it just kind of doubles the work on it. But it's fine. Yeah. I, I would like to keep it as it is right now. And you know, I get your point about staying late. Unfortunately, the coffee uh, roaster has been too long meetings. Um, and hopefully, we're near the end of that project. And uh, I, I remind you that they started off the last one by saying we're going to keep it short. Yeah. <laughs> when people say that it's usually the opposite that occurs <laughs> well hopefully we can get through all the public comment and have some discussion before we vote on it at the next meeting well, well i probably the... only have two residential cases and i will warn warn them that you may i may not get hurt yeah i agree yeah we have to finish the roaster case now if we can um question steve cohen Yes. Do you meet with um, council members at all on a periodic basis or some type of, you know, subcommittee? No, I don't. Okay. You know, I, I asked that question because, you know, a lot of our recommendations don't get acted upon and we just 364 days later we send in the recommendations. I mean, I guess I'm, I'm, I'm hoping consideration could be to put a little more frequent nudge, okay. um, you know, from um, not, not from Derek, but from Axel zoning board president. I mean, if we're, if we're making recommendations I'll gladly. I have no problem doing that at all. Yeah, um, yeah. If you can consider that, sure. um, one recommendation from the past that isn't on this one. Um, we used to recommend the elimination of uh, proportional FAR. Um, personally, I still think it should be, you know, uh, eliminated and past boards thought so too. Um, could that be added or would we wanna add that? Um, and then uh, an, another one, um, just I would like to see added, but I don't even know if it'll get any action. If it was, is this 16 foot garage setback when it comes to existing structures that you know i think most of us think is is a pretty unnecessary um so and i i know derek you think it's a waste of time i think you're spot on i mean i think you haven't turned the variance down yet it's like you know if you have an existing house your hands are tied, you know, but uh, yeah, sure. exactly. I do think want, that's completely. Do you want to add that uh, or maybe tailor that to say for existing or for, for additions, meaning if you're tearing down the entire house, then that's different. You know, there may be a way that you can comply and it's not going to be a hardship, but I mean, that could be added, meaning if, you, if you're if you working, making an addition to an existing dwelling and it has a non-compliant garage. I think, um, yes, that, that is what I was thinking. Um, it could get a little dicey on if it's gonna have to be a complete tear down versus a 60% tear down. You know, we've gotten some that are not complete tear downs and are actually, you know, um, 
a lot less than that. I don't know, Derek, if you have a viewpoint on that. I mean, I, I agree with you that doesn't seem to be necessary. Um, I just don't know how you craft the language that would, you know, like I, I have the same concern you do about the teardown game that builders play. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm saving this, it's not a teardown, but uh, I mean, I could always, if I think it's a teardown and they need a variance, I could push them to the board. I think it's worth throwing it out there. I mean, if we eliminated that in the non-conforming lots, that's almost 25% of our yeah. cases a year. We'd have less meetings. We'd be able to spend more time on the stuff that does need our attention. And I think that's a good point. The, the proportional FAR, I kind of went on the sword for that and uh, I'm still sore. So uh, uh, I don't know if <laughs> there wasn't okay. a lot of appetite. I got a severe pushback from the public and they organized uh, quite quite vociferously against it. So, hmm. uh, okay. I, I did feel the same way you did until I. Uh, there was, there was a couple council members it's probably five or six years ago wanted had the same thought and said, let's get rid of it. And, uh, you know, all the, you, you kind of harm the, the people with the smallest houses and it's just a tough sell, but I tend to agree mm -hmm. with you. Okay. On, on the partial teardowns, there might be, you know, some parallel um, bases. I think it's, and, and, architects like Steve Cohen could chime in, you know, when you're, when you're demolishing or, or, or even renovating X percentage of a structure, then you're, you have to abide by new codes. Yes, you do. As opposed to being uh, a pre-existing, you know, of, of, of current modern codes. So, I forget what that percentage is. It, it varies, but it's I think it's 20% of the value of the house. If you're doing more than 20% of the value of the house, then it needs to be brought up to code, to the current code. Oh, okay. I thought it was a, a bit higher, but anyway, um, yeah, some thought could be given to structuring an existing, you know, you know, well, we can work on some language on that, and then uh, I can, Buddy and I can edit the uh, recommendations and have it for the next meeting, and uh, also clarify the cases. Okay, okay, with me, I, you know. How would just a quick question, of Karen? Karen, how would I go about doing this? Could I contact a council person, or do I need to go to a meeting, or? Well, I mean, uh, uh, the only, I guess the only aspect of that to keep in mind is that the zoning board is the only public board where um, it, the municipal land use law does not allow any public officials to be on that board. The idea is that it has a separation from the governing body. So um, it would be unusual if you were in a committee and you were always conferring with the governing body, because the idea is that uh, that's why you can't have council members on the zoning board, because the idea is you're acting independently and you're looking at deviations from the zoning code. So I, I don't wanna discourage you from doing that, but if anybody is considering the activity report, then you know it's either of interest or it's not. Um, so I'm not sure. I mean, you could suppose you could do a memo. I guess you could talk to the president of the you know the current president of the. But I think I think Michael's right. I mean, the idea of not waiting, you know, a, a year to. You know, a year between communications, basically, if we have something we feel is important, then how do we how do we get the council to, I mean, do I, could I go to a meeting and just uh, bring it up? Well, that would, that, that would be, I guess, fall in the category of uh, comments for matters not on the agenda. 
So <laughs> if the council, would, if they want to engage you, they will. And if they say thank you, you know, we, we understand your comment and uh, thanks for appearing tonight. I mean, the, I, I don't know if you did a formal memo uh, where that might get um, some focus. If it's a formal memo and if you ask that it be distributed to every council member, you could explain in the memo, you know, why are you taking this step? Because mm -hmm. there's a concern and that you're doing it on behalf of the board and would the council consider making these changes? Um, that that might uh, have some focus given to it because it's not a usual event. And if you're going to the trouble to make a formal memo now, you're going forward and uh, making that request mm -hmm. that it needs to be something that's considered and it should be uh, part of an ordinance change. Um, I, I almost feel like if it looks too much, if it begins to look too much like this report, it will similarly not get attention. I almost, if it's not, if it's not, if it's okay for Steve or any of us, I'm not saying I was gonna do this, but to just have a meeting with somebody, I think that's what he's asking. Well, I, I guess- I, I feel like that would get to the heart of the matter quicker, really, you know? Well, I mean, the heart of the matter is, if the governing body doesn't feel an ordinance change is required, I mean, the suggestions that are being made are not complicated suggestions. So, well, not maybe not to us, but maybe they're hard to well, understand by people who don't do it all the time. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I wouldn't encourage, as your attorney, would I encourage you all to have separate meetings with council members? No. Um, in terms of, a memo that you would do, Steve, I'm assuming out of these recommendations, is there one in particular? I mean, asking for consolidation of the ordinance as well. I mean, that's ongoing and that will take, the process will take what it takes. But are there particular, because we only right now we have three in this memo and it may have four if the front facing garage relief from that is added. So well, uh, I, we at the next meeting once this is final, you yeah. the board adopts the report. Understood. And, uh, they do the resolution, and then I send it to council. Okay. Well, that, I mean that's what we do every year. All right. Out of though these recommendations, if there's one in particular, Steve, that you say, you know, this one is a particular. Yeah, all of them are important, but as chairman, you're asking them in particular about one then you know that may uh, get some attention. But again, these are pretty, I mean, any ordinance change is a big deal. So the thoughts about, for example, permitting non-complying homes in a flood zone to be raised above the base flood plan elevation without a variance. All right, well. I'm sure there may be people on the public who might oppose that, who have concerns about that. So I mean, that's gonna be the case with every one of these ordinance changes. So that, that would be my suggestion. And if you're only talking to one council member, then you're getting feedback from one council member. So that's, I'm not sure how productive that is. Well, what if we just, what if, what if we put a memo together and send it to the council. And I guess it's going to get it's going to get heard. Wouldn't it get heard at a meeting? Uh, only if they were to put it on an agenda for discussion. So maybe that's the request. Could they put something on the agenda for discussion? Because otherwise, I mean, we don't we don't control how they make up their agenda or what they choose to discuss. So if the request is that they have a discussion. Uh, I'm assuming they'll take that in mind and decide, do they want to discuss it uh, or not? Well, they may choose to refer it to someone else, to the planning board for the discussion. Uh, they, they could. I mean, yeah. I mean, that, that, that's one avenue that you can create an ordinance 
Other times, of course, it comes from the governing body to the planning board. And, you know, they, they've already introduced it. Now they say planning board, we need your input because it affects land use. Mm -hmm. But the planning board could do that. Yeah, they, they could have that discussion. Well, no, I'm saying give it to the, I mean, make the suggestion that the council and the planning board look into it or something. I mean, it's just a matter of trying to get it discussed. Understood. So, I mean, maybe the avenue is to ask that it be scheduled as a discussion point. Council and see if that's productive. If they have room on an agenda and they have the mind to discuss it. Um, if we do that um, with the 16 foot garage situation, if we let them know how many variances we've gotten from that, and that every time the variance is, is granted. I mean, my so, understanding, Derek, you correct me if I'm wrong. My understanding is that a lot of time was spent on that neighborhood character ordinance. Oh yeah. Many, so. many months and consultants were involved. So I don't know in terms of changing it, if that's the path they would take that they wanna go back and have more public forums about changing the neighborhood character ordinance. Well, I seem to remember seeing it on for this many months. Uh, yeah, I, it was a year long process. But, yeah, but it, it was also a number of different council members. I'm not, I'm not sure that a majority of this particular council mm -hmm. um, and I, you know, I'm, I'm not in the meetings or the behind the scenes discussions are as fervent for the neighborhood character, all the, you know, all the uh, restrictions that were put in there. So I don't, I don't want to assume that it's, you know, having, you know, they'd be really, really hesitant to even think about aspects being changed um I, I think that's a little bit of a leap um i would like to suggest it as far as the beginning of this process if it does change um is that the the recommendations be sort of a separate document or separate from the activity report I think listing them at the bottom is easy for council to move on to the thousand things that they have to do and not really pay attention. And I do think it's then easier to follow up on a separate document, which is recommendations of the zoning board um, and, and get some focus on that, whether it's a couple months later or three months later um to reach out but um format wise i i think it'd be recommendation from the zoning board for changes you know how that would be worded maybe we do that's a good suggestion maybe we next month i'll get this in you know ship ship shop shape to get going forward and then the, the chair writes a memo attaches our uh yeah you know, our annual report, but, uh, you know, we want to bring these items we think need attention. We've asked for the lot, uh, small lot variances to go away for numerous years now, and we see X amount of cases a month, a year, taking up the board's time and having citizens pay unnecessary money, in our opinion, to, to do this. And then we just go down the list and ask perhaps they could be uh, a, a meeting uh, at council, or I could actually reach out to the administrator see what the best way, but I, you know, it, it has to get on there. They, I'm sure they see it every year, but as Michael says, there, there's always a, another important object that comes along and uh, stuff gets pushed aside, so. I think that's a really good suggestion, Michael. Yeah, I agree. Maybe even, even I mean, have it be the cover letter, the recommendations and have the, you know, the report be the second page. Cause I think if it's at the end, it can be, you know, Ignore. Maybe you're out of 
out of energy reading it by the time you get to the end. I just think well, the cover letter could be a good summary of the important cover letter. Cover letters more could be more readable too. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I, no offense. I just mean it would be more as a narrative, and it would be more pointed. Good idea. Okay. All right. So, so Derek, then you want to do if when we meet in June, we can discuss it again and then figure out exactly how to approach it. Yep. Good. Good idea. Okay. Um, I guess, do we have anything else we want to talk about right now? Well, don't you, did you have this on the agenda, the public comment procedure? Yeah, we did. And I, I don't know, Eve, did you want to bring the board up to date? On yeah, that? let me, um, this, we talked about this a few months ago. Um, well, I mean, I guess all of us didn't. Um, it came up that sustainable Princeton seems to be showing up a lot at zoning these days. Um, it came up that Hi. it's possible to gain points towards being, you know, various levels of a sustainable town with sustainable Jersey. Um, and one of the ways to do it is to have um, organiz uh, boards like ourselves open up to public comment for things that are not on the agenda. So I, I think that idea was floated in March, but it turns out, and I just checked today with Christine Simington, who's the executive director, just to make sure that um, she said if she said if we think it's a good idea. And I think we had talked about it a little bit. If we thought it was a good idea to have just make time available like council does, you know, great. But we shouldn't do it because Sustainable Princeton is requesting it. Because we because apparently the town is very good on sustainability and has plenty of points. So it's not depending on us to add that to our agenda. So then it's just a matter of, do we think it's worth it to have you know, a period whenever we'd have it in the meeting, maybe at the beginning, um, but it's not, it's not a request, it's not a formal request. Don't do it on a, don't do it because you think Sustainable Princeton wants, wants it done. Derek, do you know, is the planning board gonna do this? Do we know, or have they done that? Um, I don't think they have. I, I'd, have, I'd have to double check. I mean, I go to all the meetings. I just don't recall it ever. Hearing it. Yeah. In my mind. So I, I'm thinking they don't. You know, it's curious to me how much misinformation there is out there about the zoning board. I saw in a letter last week, town topics we referred to again as some regulatory body that was messing up something. And yeah. I'm hesitant to open open us up to public comment just for the you know just to see what they people have to say, but I'm not against it. I just what's the purpose of it? Well, we've had people come before the board before and ask, you know, a, a specific question on on. Uh, you know, mini mansions, you know, on, on undersized lots. And then we'll tell them that it's probably best to take that up with the governing body than to, to then take it up with us. Well, remember this is public comment. Doesn't mean that you have to make a response. So in the governing body, state law requires governing bodies to allow this. So, it's up to governing, usually some do it at the beginning and then at the end again, say, does anybody want to make a comment? Doesn't mean though that they have to get an answer, it's just a comment. And it can't be about anything on the agenda because you know we have a process for hearing and opening it up for each application to specific comment or testimony on an application. In this case, this would simply be a comment. 
It's not sworn. Nobody has to be under oath. Um, so I, I don't think it's harmful, but I doubt there'll be too many comments where you'll be able to respond. You would just listen and say thank you for your comment. Mm -hmm. Because you can't respond to, when you can't respond to an uh, ongoing application and you you could say it's questionable as, as to whether you should be talking about past applications as well. If someone's comment is, why did you approve <clears throat> variants for this application? Yeah. You know, I don't think you should have done that. Well, it would simply be thank you for the comment. <laughs> thank you. It's, so, probably, it's probably going to be more problematic than it's yeah. worth. I mean, if 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 the majority would like to do it, the only concern I had is was just what was distributed was sort of a possible procedure. And I just wanted to point out, I think this was for Montgomery, but they all their boards meet in person now. So they don't they don't follow any. If you want to make a comment, then you need to be there in person to do it. They they don't meet via Zoom or uh, uh, through some other um, electronic means. And also this procedure, I think this went into effect at the very beginning of COVID. So I think there was some thought about maybe it's better to get comments in advance. So you, there was concern about people trying to log on and you're like, wait, they were not admitted. Why are they coming into the meeting? What's going on? Um, but I think telling the public they should send their comments in advance to the board secretary I, th I think all that really does is just add to work for staff. And if someone has a question, then they can raise their hand and say, yes, I, I would like to make a comment or a question. Can so, we put a time limit on it? Yeah. I think this? you'd have to because yeah. Oh, yeah. normally if you have four applications that night. I mean, it, it gets to be a lot. Yeah, you don't want to spend 15 minutes with somebody saying, well, I have a comment and then I have a follow-up comment and then I have a question. So you just say, well, you have so many minutes. That's it. And we would do that towards the beginning of the session? I would think beginning because yeah. the rest of the meeting is devoted now to applications, each of which gets yeah. its own public comment period. Yeah. So, and this is supposed to be about something not on the agenda. Well, so... It would seem to me that that um, I think I think you're right. If someone has a question, they could ask Derek or ask Claudia or ask you, you know, some member of the public. And rather than opening it up at the in the meeting, I think would maybe be that might be uh, we may get some you know total erroneous you know totally erroneous comments you know unrelated. I guess, the, and then the only thing we could do is smile and say thank you, and that would be it. But they may be looking for more, and then you get into lengthy discussions. So maybe we just don't do it at all. We're not required to do it. I mean, I think, you know, perhaps if, if it turns out the planning board has decided this is useful, then perhaps there's, you know, some thought about having both land use boards in town follow that same process. That's why I'd ask Derek. Are they doing it? Um, they don't have to be the same, but for something like this process, it might make sense. If one land, land use board is doing it, then okay. If you want some um, uh, consistency then between both boards. But. Does anybody want to do it? I can't, it seems like we have many uh, meetings where things get carried anyway, and inserting yeah. something at the beginning of the meeting um, that could be open to anything seems just hard to, hard right. to manage, um, yeah. even with a time limit. Okay, so why don't we just um, yeah. not do it for now? Yeah. I mean, I, I think people an issue, have we'll talk about it again. Yeah. Yeah, it'd be, it'd be hard to manage. And I think people would be pretty dissatisfied if they came forward and we just 
basically stonewalled him without providing any kind of response. Right. That's exactly it. Just saying yeah. thank you. Just is, saying thank you. It doesn't seem disingenuous. <laughs> and then probably if someone brought up something big, then I'll come it'll be out in the paper that we listened and didn't even respond. Or I mean, it could just kind of become like this, you know, right. Opening ourselves up to, you know, uh, comments or open up to, to uh, objections for things that we didn't even ask for. So, yeah, um, there's going to be an expectation that yeah. if they have a chance to say something, they're going to hear something back. It's something back. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Would, you know, it'd be nice if people, if there's some way to let the public know. I mean, we do this sometimes. We say, if you want the ordinance change, go to town council. So, if, you know, it seems like if there was a way to say, if you want that, go to town council. And if you want to know process or specifics about ordinance, go to the. Well, we've had people uh, say that. Zoning, zoning officer, but I think, or, you know, but it's not, we, we can't really do anything in either realm, particularly that, that, so it would be frustrating. Kind well, of we've that. had people in the public portion of, of meetings ask that specific question, you know, I mean, why, why are you allowing this to happen or why, you know, and, and again, we say go to the governing body to talk to them about it. So I think probably it's going to happen whether we formally do it or not. If somebody has a question, they stand up and yeah. ask it during a presentation, uh -huh. you know, just, just out of politeness, we don't shut them down. Right. We won't let them go on and on. But uh, so I, I would rather not have a, I think rather not have, you know, a formal questioning session. Okay. Yeah. Motion. Oh, we want to do that. Fine. Uh, I mean, that's fine. It's a good idea. So I move yeah. that we not allow public comment. Is that what the motion should read? Well, why don't we say no. public comment for matters not on the agenda? Exactly. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> It would be <laughs> nice to say we'd rather than have public comment. <laughs> you could say no public comment, but you could say for matters not on the agenda. Right, I think that makes sense. Yes, right. that's good. Yes, like what uh, Karen said, please. Okay. Second. Okay. Claudia? Buddy? Let me see if she's. I, I am here. I am. Okay. Sorry, I was my thing wasn't on. Um, there is one member of the public, but I don't think he has any comments. Okay. No hands. Okay. I think he's uh, with the newspaper desk. Okay. Do we have a motion in a second? I do. Didn't we? Yeah. Yes. Yes. So we need to call the roll. Okay, Ms. Chen? Yes. Ms. Colson? Yes. Mr. Davich? Yes. Mr. Foy? Yes. Mr. Shriver? Yes. Mr. Tenenbaum, I know he came in at 3.30. Karen? Yeah, that's yes. okay. He was here for the discussion. Line. Okay. Yes, yes. Chairman Cohen? Yes. Thank you. Okay, I guess we don't have anything else on the agenda. Uh, unless, unless somebody wants to bring up something that wasn't on the agenda. I hate to say that. <laughs> so... Okay, so we're adjourned until, oh, wait, let me ask one question. Um, on the, can I, Karen, bring up a question on the coffee roasting facility? <laughs> Just a general. Well, I, is it procedural or is it substantive? I just wanted, well, I'll tell you what it is. It wasn't, it's not a comment. Yeah. They, they, uh, they referenced an existing this this new piece of equipment they had i believe they mentioned or someone in the hearing mentioned that it was in use in in a coffee shop in northern jersey steve you know what i think i think 
it would be better because I don't want to discuss this application today because it's okay. It's fine. I, I just it wasn't so a discussion of the application. If there's additional information you want from them, then you could let me know or Derek or Claudia, and we fine. can put that out to them to say, would you please? Yeah, that's what I actually. That's, that's what, what I was I, getting. That's what to, I so. thought you wanted. I just I don't yeah. want to discuss this application today because it's. Yeah, not I didn't want to discuss the application in detail. I'll send you a note. Okay. okay thank you. All right. I'll go peacefully. <laughs> <laughs> and rest assured, Sustainable Princeton will not be disappointed that we voted the way we did just now. Good. Okay, we're adjourned. Thanks, everyone. Thank Thank you. You. Part of your busy Thank day. You. Bye bye. Bye bye. See you at the end. Right. Bye bye.